Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Everyone is a product, and everyone needs marketing to succeed. Let's talk about it right now on the C-Spot. Going to market with Wendy and Peter. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the C-Spot with Wendy Cooper. I'm going to learn to say my full name, Wendy Cooper and Peter. So be. There you go. And, uh, oh, my God. So today is like... Gower Street is closed. You can't park on Gower Street, and you got to have the big load line. They're shooting. Yeah, it was crazy. They're shooting on the studio every freaking show that I think that they can possibly shoot. Right, and there, the, there's a lot of extras today, they said, so the cars are just piling in. Oh, my God, in. you should see the parking structure. It's like it, it, I had to go to the top, and then they're all lined up. Oh, well, never mind. I'll ask you after I introduce you where you parked. <laughs> So hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the C-Spot, going to market with Wendy and Peter. And this is where we talk about everything from whatever the hell we want to talk about. Now, usually we should talk about things that are um, appropriate to marketing because right. we believe everybody is a product and that everybody needs marketing to succeed. Exactly. But a lot of times on this show, we just don't talk about marketing at all. Um, because our guests are sometimes people who are... Singers, songwriters, actors, actresses, too low, Peter, too low. I can't hear myself now. Peter's adjusting the sound as we go. There. We were just a little hot. Is that hot. better? Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So anyway, today is a, um, today is a glorious day. It is. <laughs> it's always when it's the, the third time around, it's always a good time. Um. Oh, you think so? Yeah. yeah. I think it's like the fourth time <laughs> in a round, but we nobody knows what we're talking about. So. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so Peter, did you have a good weekend or did you have a good past week? I did. The week's been good. Yeah. It's been a good busy week. And actually, if I can trump my own, it's not really tooting my horn or anything, but today's a <laughs> very, today on August 14th is actually my 27 year anniversary of being injured in a wheelchair. Well, how about that? Isn't that crazy? 27 years. 27 years. August 14th, huh? Yeah. I always remember because it's my nephew's birthday, and it happened on his first birthday, and he's 28 today. Well, well, hell, why wouldn't you remember the, the day that changed right. your life forever? You know, but Peter, you know how much I admire you. Yeah, and it's a day of celebration, not sadness or That's anything. That's right. You know? It's a day of celebration, and we have to say that because we got a super Jew in the in the studio today. Right, so with we some do, celebratory liquid. <laughs> we do like to we do like to celebrate life as opposed to mourn it. Um, today we are going to probably be talking a lot about direct response because my guest is my good friend or our guest is my very good friend and colleague paul greenberg from greenberg direct and paul he is the i'm reading it oh, i'm on camera so i don't have to like be shamefully reading something i'm reading it uh anyway paul's creative director for greenberg direct he's not just the creative director he's the owner of greenberg direct and has the impressive drtv track record which for any of you out there that know anything about direct response television it is one of the hardest most difficult things to be successful at and uh, but paul's track record uh, spans 15 years which oddly enough Mine spans 19. Uh, 12 of his DRTV commercials have, been gener have generated over 100 million bucks in sales, and his campaigns have grossed over three b b b b b billion uh, wow. worth of sales in 104 countries. It's absolutely true. Paul, I'm going to welcome you, and then I'm going to kudo you some more. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back. <laughs> now, now I feel special. <laughs> You actually are very special. It's amazing special. how you sque squeezed all those people in here. <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, totally. But we can't see them because we only have a limited amount of cameras. <laughs> Our studio audience, be quiet. <laughs> um, but before establishing Greenberg Direct in 2011, Paul served as chief creative officer for Thane Direct for four years and was vice president of production for Silmark for seven years. His, his mega hits include H2O, not H20, but H2O, because I'm the blonde I am, I would say H20, <laughs> Mop, Flavor Wave, Turbo, Flavor Wave, Turbo, um, Abdur, Twist, Abslide, Miracle Blade, Walkfit Orthotics. Did Dr. Allen ever reach out to you? Uh, he did, kind of. 
Oh, okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Paul has produced feature film, and another couple of films are in development. Oh, that's cool. His shows have won nine ERA awards, which for those of you out there, the very small amount of you watching or listening that know what those are, who kind of gives a shit in a way, right? I mean, it's, it's really a cool thing, but I'll never get one. All you personal have. reasons. I've been nominated. I just have never Many gotten times. one. Yeah. Um, but I do have 15 telly awards to your 14. Beat me that. Okay. Mm. Seven communicator awards. Zero for me. Seven for you. Six Impex. I have no idea what those are. So I have zero. You have six. Uh, and eight Aurora awards. Wow. Do you have them all like on a shelf somewhere? I do have some of them on my shelf. Yeah. Some do, of you, them do your tellies yeah. go like, go like, like, you have to keep them polished. They do. They get... Uh, they get uh, dirty very, very, very quickly. <laughs> and although they do come from the same company that does the Oscars, you exactly. Know. So if you get an Oscar ever, you got to keep that sucker polished. Exactly. Too. I look forward to having that problem. Uh, right. He is, uh, and you're a voting member of the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, which is actually referred to as BAFTA, and is a licensed private pilot. I don't know when he's ever going to invite me on an airplane ride, but. We'll see. Why wow, you got some good research there. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Didn't you supply that to us? <laughs> I'm sure someone did. <laughs> yes, we dug it up somewhere. So, Paul, what's going on? It's good to see you. Now, I was very excited. This is my third time here. It is. And um, and I thought that was like really impressive until I just happened to watch on your uh, YouTube channel and watched Blair Taylor announce that he'd been on four times. Yep. Blair's been on four? Four times. So I'm um, like... Uh, Blair's been on four? four Peter, times? is that right? Blair's been on yeah, four? Yeah, Blair's the four He's time... He's a freaking hog. You know that? He's so just a I'm hog. So I'm like, I, I got to catch up here. <laughs> I was feeling impressive, but if, if Blair's been on four times. Yeah, you've been... Well, you're But three you're is still three. very impressive. Blair's four, and then our sponsor, Scott Kowalczyk, is just three. Two. Is three? Yeah. Oh, he's three. Oh, really? Yeah, he pays he's for three the, as well. He paid for the privilege. He paid, right. He, does, exactly. he pays right. every week for the privilege. So I brought you some goodies before we start, if mm-hmm. that's okay. Very important. Last time I remember, it was a, uh, probably a year ago, but my in-laws were just in town from Brazil. Yeah. And uh, they brought their very special uh, Brazilian treat that I gave last time I brought you. It's this little thing called... Uh, you didn't bring me... Paco Quinha. You did not bring me a treat this last time you were here. You got brought me oh, was that two the times very ago? first time you were here. We got but, wasted but and ate the cheese bread. And <laughs> oh, right. There's a cheese bread I brought last yeah. time. Uh, this this one I also brought for Peter as well. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, thank you, Paul. I just... I just, I, just <laughs> no, I, I have to get them. Peter can't get up to get them. <laughs> I was going to throw them at him. Okay. <laughs> here, I'll get it. here we are. There you are. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, I can take one. Sure. Sure, we can all share them together. Thank you so much, uh, Paul. And, uh, from from Brazil, very uh, very wow. sweet, very tasty, and uh, I knew that Wendy liked these because I think I brought this two years ago, two years ago maybe. Oh, okay. Wow, very it's exciting! Kind of like, like, like it, it's almost like a kind of halva kind yeah, of thing. Is that thing. how you say that? Halva. <laughs> Thank so you, Wendy. P- Peter will have to try and. <laughs> you like it? Hmm, that Strict, is good. Strictly kosher. It's super kosher, right? <laughs> super kosher. I, I put my headphones back on to get back in my camera. Uh, and then, well, right. It's, it's very good, mm, actually. It's very good. Nice. Yeah, it's like it's peanut, peanut butter, in, right? In, or in something? Portuguese, yeah. It's very good. It's really and, good, and I love peanuts. And this, last time I brought red wine. This time I brought... Uh, Paul's, Paul, by the way, is Joe Kosher. I mean, Paul Kosher. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Kosher. So very, very kosher, but very mm. nice, a sweet white wine. It's the Cerebi uh, Moscato. Mm. Oh, it's a Moscato. 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 Yeah. Moscato. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. We're not drinking it, though, from, are we? From Italy. Uh, I, I brought it. You can do whatever you like with it. Okay. But Thank it's, you. But it's there. I come par- bearing gifts. Did you want to drink it? Uh, it's okay. I don't have to. If you'd like to. I don't, I don't know if they have... Uh, Is it cold? A little bit. Yeah, there's the show that I do with Ariana Savalas. We got wasted. <laughs> <laughs> we drank champagne. We called it gin and jazz. But we did that's champagne. Um, maybe I'll take it home. Okay, that's fine. Is that okay? That's that's absolutely fine. I had a little bit of a stomach thing yesterday. I sw- slept 12 hours. Oh, wow. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> what's going on, Paul? What are you doing? So what what's going to? on? I'm busy with a uh, doing my own show with my own product. Uh, half hour infomercial. I've been busy. It's not a out. toilet stool, is it? It's not. Uh, yeah, it's called. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, called poop and go. Uh, poop and go or squatty party. <laughs> uh, easy. I'm allowed to say that. You wow, that's great. So you both have products that you're both bringing to market. Exactly. That's really interesting. Well, that's really cool because you know that's kind of, it's kind of what we talk about here on the show. <laughs> so can you talk about I it? I figured. Um, 
you know, I, not really. I, I can be a little bit uh, obsequious about it. Uh, that's a word. I have no knowledge of what that, that means. That's a word that Steve Ober taught me, and I still don't know what it means, but it sounds very good, I'm sure. Um, obsequious? Um, obsequious? Obsequious. Um, so I can, uh, it's essentially, it's a half hour show, and you know who's, uh, the, the inventor of it is uh, our good friend John Abdo. Oh, really? Yeah. You remember John Abdo? Of course he was I know on the John. Show. He was on the show. He's been on your show, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so John uh, came to me with a product about two years ago, and we've been working on it now, and we're very excited. We've... Uh, uh, have our, uh, is our it prototypes. a supplement, kind of like his androzine or whatever no. he does? No, it's not. It's a it's a household uh, product, um, and uh, let's just say you use it in the bedroom. A broom. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah, I shouldn't. Starts, I, I should. Does I it should, start with a D? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say this in front of Wendy because <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's mind is going to go shooting right. off in so many different Tell directions. Tell me what it starts so with. Sorry, I'll just say it's used in the house. Uh, no, because it'll give it away. But. Um, <laughs> How can that be possible? It'll give it away. If, and if oh. I guess it, you just say, no, that's not it. <laughs> we have to play. Oh, you want, you want to know the, the product? No. The, the, the first letter of the product name is W. There you go. That's, okay. It's a blow mm. up Wendy doll. A uh, Wendy doll. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've, uh, we've gone through um, developments. We have our, our testimonial groups are done. Our clinical trials are done. Um, are, oh, you uh, had to do clinicals um, on it? Unlike my EasyGo Pro, you do not have to do clinicals. Don't have to, but it looks good. Um, and um, and also, well, some of the some of the claims we want to make uh, want to be a little uh, little edgier on the claims, so we want to make sure that we have uh, the, uh, the 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 clinicals to back so, it up. So, so you find that the 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 claims are very important because it actually is a better selling factor, right? Exactly. I mean, this is very important. So many times people come to you and say, oh, you know, I've got this great uh, cream or this great product, and it's going to help this uh, solve this problem. Um, but you're very limited as to what you can actually say because so many times the, the claims you want to make are, are bordering on medical claims. Right. Um, so there's the whole structure function issue. So if, if you if you want to be able to make you know some some broader claims you know bordering on uh, medical, uh, if you have a if you have a clinical trial with enough uh, you know a large enough testimonial group, uh, you can you can you can get away with that, uh, and that really helps strengthen you know. Uh, uh, because the FTC is very critical, most people really don't understand that. When you watch direct response, you know, because we're always being bashed, right? Infomercials, even the short form commercials, like ah, I see those things on late at night. You know, why do I see them on late at night? It's like, well, there's a reason for that, but we won't go into that. But everything we do has a reason, right? And um, and and claims are so very important because things really don't sell unless you can have a claim that. The FTC, number one, will approve or, you know, they, they want us to have claims that are based on clinical studies. Right. And for people who have products and they say, well, it works because everybody I know <laughs> that used it, it worked. It doesn't make any difference. Right. You have to have the claims, the percentage claims or whatever. So whenever you see like a skincare item and it says basically, you know, 80% um, of the people saw a 90% improvement over 22 days. Those are the things that actually sell beauty products. Right. For sure. And, and just to be able to, to show those kind of claims and have people make those claims, you need to have some kind of uh, backup for it. Uh, without the backup, it's very, very easy for, for you to get shut down, whether it be by uh, regulators or uh, your competition comes suing you. Exactly. And exactly. that's the thing, because uh, uh, our particular product is a is a big competitor in the space currently, whose show is just uh, winding down. It was a massive I show. I know what it is. No, 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 I'm sure. Don't say. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, I won't. Okay. I so, won't. So uh, when I'm on, please go well, next time when I'm on, we'll be finished, and I'll be very happy to discuss. No, all it takes the you freaking forever to do a show. Know. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> it takes you forever <laughs> to do know. it right. Well, yeah, and you do them right, and that's why you have such a high high success. Right. 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 Thank God. But Paul, can we talk just a little bit about the state of the of the industry and how long form, which is a twenty eight thirty format, th the long form infomercials are really having a tough time these days. They really are, and it's uh, you know it's interesting because the amount of people that you speak to in the business and they're they're like you know I had the show and they tested and then all of a sudden it just dropped off a cliff. It, it's been happening a lot. And uh, I think it's because people aren't adjusting to the, the, the new reality. You know, people have been talking for years about uh, the impact of iTunes and Netflix and uh, 
and you know Amazon and and all of that streaming the, the, media. The, the, what, but right, well, the the impact of people being able to watch something when they want to, as opposed to the channel surfing of the old days, where people are just clicking through the channels looking for something to watch. Exactly, and so what's happening is that even though uh, less people are watching the commercials, unfortunately, the cost of media didn't go down. In fact, in many cases, it's gone up, and you're you're getting much less bang for your buck. So. The only kind of saving grace is that a lot of the products that uh, that uh, do well is still those that are skewing a little bit uh, to some of the older people, people in their, I don't say old people, in, in, their, 50, in their 40s and 50s. Um, Sorry, I that's back really up in the microphone when I laugh. I'm learning that. But yeah, but seriously, we say older people and it's like... <laughs> Yeah, I know, exactly. But <laughs> at least, you know, hopefully those people don't kind of catch on to the whole digital revolution too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, international is being very uh, prominent now in the campaigns yes. because of, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of these... Uh, is it supposed to be like this? Uh, it's difficult uh, to eat if it's like this. Well, I know, but it should no, it should be a one solid piece. Can, I, can everyone see what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, if it's you're the, listening, it's if a you're Brazilian listening. candy. <laughs> sorry, it's a candy that Paul brought... That's from Brazil, and it's yummy, and, and I want to eat the whole thing, but crumbling. It, it's crumbling in my... In Probably my just from all the traveling mind. and stuff it's done. Kind of like my Easy Go Pros. No, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. No, but anyway. Uh, okay, so Usually pardon me while I try to eat yeah, this. You can just, hey, and you I'm know, gonna, sprinkle it across I'm gonna your face. Make it into a, I'm making it into a ball. <laughs> <laughs> and can I actually pose a question here that I'm really curious yeah. about? Before we get Please into do. the state of direct response and stuff like that, I think it's so, so fascinating, and hopefully our audience will too, that both of you are... You know, you have done all we these do exactly infomercials the and the same thing, but now you're both bringing your own product to market. I pose this question to both of you, actually, like, how different does it feel that now it's your money, it's your skin in the game? What's that like compared to, like, you That's know... That's a really good question. Probably why I didn't feel well yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. Paul, would you want to answer that? Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, for, for both of us, having been in this business so long, um, so many of the products we've done and the ones that have been massive successes, and you've sat and you watched, you know, this uh, this inventor or this direct response marketer take this product that you poured your heart and soul That's into, right. and either you know not pay you, That's or, right. or pay you, and you know, but you're only getting a little tiny uh, piece right. of the pie, and see them making hundreds of millions of yep. dollars um, every time. You know, obviously you feel pride when you have a show, but when it's somebody else who's you know making the lion's share of the profits, it's very, it's kind of painful. And there's also a level of control that you lose. It's like handing off your baby to somebody else. That's right. When, when you're involved in the project and it's your project and you get to make the decisions, first of all, it's an incredibly liberating feel not have to answer to some That's right. some, some executive who doesn't really know or thinks they know what they're talking about. But you're able to then you know, do what's best for your product and do what's best for the show. That's incredibly liberating. That's wonderful to be able to put your energies into something in, that you believe. On the other hand, it is in, incredibly scary, as scary hell. and nauseating. <laughs> um, but if frustrating. Look, it, but but at the end of the day, if you if you believe in the product and you're going to put all your effort and time into it, there's no reason why it can't work. And that's what we have to tell ourselves. Just like when we take any product uh, brought to us from an outside, we we put all our efforts and energies and do the best job we can, regardless of who it's for. Um, but when you do it for yourself. Um, there's a there's level of satisfaction and excitement that you that you yeah, have. Yeah, it's the it's the um, yeah your excitement. I think your level of excitement is different. Your level of commitment is different, right? Yeah, uh, it's for me. It's very scary. At the same time, it's it's almost like I never wanted to do my own product since I've done my own products. Because years ago, I got into this business because I had my own products, and then I got out of it because I didn't. You know, I just, you lose control of it. The partners come in, the this come in, the that happens, or whatever happens, and then it's just like, you know, people sue each other. It's just a mad world out there. So if you can have 100% control of something that, you know, obviously we're not going to do a product on our own with our own money unless we, it's proof of concept is already there. Exactly. Right. So exactly. we're not, I'm not, I don't believe I'm risking too much with Easy Go Pro because proof of concept was there and the reason that I'm doing it is because the people that I did work with on Squatty Potty which is an amazing product I have to say that um, <laughs> You know, we made that so, so, I mean, I actually made that so successful through DR, and then they didn't get it, and they pulled yeah. it off the air, and it was so, 
outrageously successful that I was so hurt by that. And then I just said, but this proof of concept, it's just pro it's proven. So let's improve it. You know, like most products you'll see, there's a lot of them. There's just different variations of them because they have different generations, right? Somebody took a product and improved the can opener a hundred right, times. Yeah. So, um, and that's really all I do with Easy Go Pro. I didn't invent it. I didn't invent the idea of it. I didn't do anything like that. I just know that from being, you know, a cancer survivor and being somebody that's had, you know, an elimination problem all my life from... And, and I know that cost of goods wise, it's a one off. It's all of these other things. It's ubiquitous. Everybody can use it, blah, blah, blah. It had all the bells and whistles to be a great product, you know, a great consumer product. And so that's why we decided to invest our own money in it. And it's, uh, you're right, Paul. I don't have to listen. I don't have to answer to anybody. And it's just really joyous. And, and the so. other thing is that when you're doing a project for somebody else, um, you, you know, your, your level of success with that. Is limited. Is, is limited. To and them. All, right, is, uh, yeah, it can only be as good. You can make the most incredible production, but the, sh the product can only roll out to the extent that the third right. party is uh, going to roll it out. That's right. Uh, or, or deliver on the campaign or stick with it or have the courage or the conviction. Right, to, to, to test and tweak and test and tweak. Because I've been involved like you have in campaigns where, you know, we do a really great job. But then the, the, client, said, the client wakes up one morning and he's fighting with his partner and they go, oh, well. You know, right. we're going to walk away from it. Or we tested $6,000 in media, and it really didn't do what we thought it was going to do. So we're moving on to the next one. Exactly. Really? And you've got a back end, and you've killed yourself because you think that promise of the back end is there. Right. And then it's not there. So it's really disappointing, and it's a very hard business to be in from our producer creative campaign management, you know, um, standpoint. And it's also just on a simplistic level, it's nice not to have to answer to anybody. That's always nice. Just to the Just higher being. <laughs> <laughs> or your spouse. <laughs> so it also kind of sounds to me like the walk away from this is that if I'm out there with a the product and I'm thinking of going the direct response route, it's like listen to the people running your campaign. Like why do people go against what the advice you guys are giving, you know? It's a very good question. Um, it, very often you get inventors that come and they have the, these very concrete uh, you know, and sometimes quite ridiculous ideas about the way that a, a show should be marketed or, or a product should be positioned or the way the uh, media sh uh, campaign should be handled. Um, and sometimes I have to tell you the truth. Campaign, the people running campaigns don't right. know what the they F they're talking they, about. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, there's, there's a lot of examples out there that have had everything done kind of the right way, but yet, you know... The producer says, well, you should use this media company because, you know, they're getting a little something, something right. from them. But then that media company really isn't the right media company for that product. Or, you know, it's a long form company versus a short form and they really should be buying in a short form mentality mm. and they're using a long form strategy. That, by the way, was uh, for me quite a shock when I started my own company. The amount of calls that I got from media companies literally within really? a couple of weeks saying um we're like better than the other guy <laughs> no, no no we'd like to enter into an agreement with you uh, to, to to give you a kickback oh right and i was I'm you like, didn't this know is, that i, I kind of heard it but the, everybody was so blatant about it and everyone sends over the, the 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 contract and here it is you know recommend us uh, to your clients and then and we'll give, we'll you, this give you and we'll give you a percentage yeah and and, wow. was, and there was like I, I received i think three calls and I, I i was sending them to my my attorney you know <laughs> like it's like how many of these are you getting you know everyone sends them and, but that's just the way the business is done Isn't it's very important for people who are who are getting into dr to, to know that happens and you should ask your uh, your production company or your and uh, at, a, at, a, at a certain point there's there's two different ways that you can that a, that a model can be created right you can say okay I'm gonna I'm gonna be getting a percentage from this media company but be upfront about that because uh, sometimes like I'll do commercials and I won't get a percentage from my client Right. Maybe they just aren't into it. They're not going to give me a back end, right? But they still want the low production, you know, fee up front and whatever. And if I, but if I refer, and I've always stood my ground on this, if I refer a client to a media company, I am referring them to the media company that is best suited for their success. Absolutely. Not to a media company just because I'm going to get one more point from them than I do from anybody else. Because believe me, you'll end up with no points, right? That's right. Uh, on the other hand, you can make sure that you get 
kickbacks from every single company, so that way there's no <laughs> well, right? There, there's no preference there. But it's, it's either way, it's important to tell your uh, it's, it's important to tell the client that you're dealing with. Uh, they at the very least should ask. The same thing happens with music. People don't realize how much money you get from residuals from broadcasting the the, the music portion uh, that accompanies right. the the especially on the half hour commercials. Um, and people don't realize very often that the production company gets am i blowing any secrets here for you uh, no okay, no, no you want no. You, told, you told me you wanted secrets of the industry <laughs> so, but no, people I, don't didn't. I said state of the art uh, <laughs> state of the state of the union kind of thing <laughs> no but uh man, music is a very different thing because when i had six day by diet i learned this back in the day six day by diet we composed our own music but we had no idea for years that that show was on the air for years and it was on the air more than the freaking thigh master right but the guy that composed the music owned all of the rights the publishing and writers rights and right. all of that he made a ton of money because that show was on the air. It was a long form, and it was on the air for a long time. So that's where I learned about, you know, the the royalties in music. To, to just to give you the the listeners and the, and the viewers mm -hmm. an idea, um, the first infomercial I worked on, um, Abslide, so that was a big show. But the the composer made in excess of three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> on what? royalties yeah. from the music that played in the background of the infomercial. Yeah. Now they've since renegotiated the terms with the unions, and so they get about half the amount that they did at that point. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was right around the same time. What year was that? That was uh, ninety-nine, two thousand. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because mine was way back in 94, 95, Oh, it was 96. even higher. It was even higher. Yeah, than I know that guy made a, this guy made a lot of money, way more money than I made from it. Wow, right. that's crazy mm -hmm. that the yeah. composer would make more than the person running the campaign. Or no, I didn't run the campaign. I owned the product, and I was My in the commercial. <laughs> it was like a triple problem. Um, yeah, but it's it, that's just something that people don't realize. And if you can do a deal with your uh, composer to you know split the royalties with or, you. Or, uh, better yet, Paul, you set up the publishing company. Right. Right. And you uh, well, have the publishing company, and then you hire the writer, and the writer comes in and composes the music, and then you keep publishers, and they keep writers. Right. Or you can just pay the uh, pay the composer enough money, and he t he gets nothing uh, as a buyout. As a buyout, That's he gets right. nothing. You want to pay him and, thirty grand? And you get the royalties, right. you but get you, it all. you still need to set up a publishing company with ASCAP or VMI. Exactly. The other funny thing that I've seen happen a lot now is people are um, you know, they have a, a bunch of you know library music for different parts of the show. Um, and they fill in the background really, really quietly. They put some kind of background track, uh, almost kind of like a percussion with a light, very light background track. Um, I've seen this on a bunch of fitness shows. And it turns out, so I'm looking, listening to that music, I'm thinking, that sounds familiar. I realized it was um, some um, music composed on GarageBand. Yeah. And what happens is the producer takes a cut from garage and just band, loops it loops it in the background very faintly and he's now the composer so 40 percent of the music in the show is this very quiet background loop from uh, garage, garage band. bands and he collects the world 40 percent of the royalties wow I, I won't mention the name of the uh the producer that i know you did don't that. mention anybody you know don't come <laughs> on my show and mention anybody whatever you do but but that's just something that happens that's a that's a trick but it's it's fascinating once again people need to know there's so many different streams of revenue that can come from a dl product whether it be the music right. whether it be retail or international or catalog you need to be aware of all the different uh Streams so you don't to. you don't do short form anymore. You did the short form with the no, nine so eleven coin. Yeah, the justice coin. We did that. We did uh, JFK uh, commemorative coin, Titanic, the hundred uh, year. Uh, did you talk to this guy that I sent you the other day? Yeah, I did. Uh, don't you think that that could be something? I think it could be massive. Thank you. Um, well, yeah. Will you give me the uh, back absolutely end? Absolutely, <laughs> I will give you. Uh, and to, to talk about that, you did say, I'll give you this guy, but you have to give me a kickback. And that's fine. That's right. And that's he right. knew about it, so that was good. <laughs> he says, you are giving Wendy a kickback. I said, yes. So actually, you sent his partner in today to, to meet me. And I was just meeting him before. So I think oh, that, that, could be, that could be massive. Of course, they just... Uh, they just need the money to run the campaign. Well, that's oh, why that I that's thing. why I had to, yeah that's why I sent him you know because right. I'm really busy doing my own thing and I'm really focused on EasyGo Pro, and when he he actually posted on LinkedIn 
which I, I never go on LinkedIn, and I, and I got a notice because it's in this group for DR something or other, right? And I saw him. He asked this question. You know George Smith? Do you know George Smith? Okay. So I, I answered it like, give me a call because <laughs> I thought of you right away. Right. And then George Smith goes, oh, watch out what you're doing. You have to make sure that you know you know what you're talking about and this. And then I was like, shut <laughs> up, George. <laughs> Will you? Do you have nothing better to do? But he always does that on LinkedIn. And um. And then I talked to him, and I thought, you know, and then I went to the website, and I thought, yeah, this could really be something, right. especially in the Hispanic market, Right, Paul. for sure, for sure. Oh, my God. Um, so should I be booking my – will you fly me on your private, private jet <laughs> somewhere? Because I think that – but the money thing, you know, I'm not going to find anybody money. Right, exactly. But I, I, I think it's got great potential. And the other thing is that's really interesting is um, this guy also – a massive – one of them is, and the other partner, the guy that lives up in uh, Seattle, he's uh, a feature film producer, produced 21 features. Oh, wow. Uh, and distributed 250 features, and we're now talking about him uh, helping, helping to pre-sell my, uh, my feature film that I'm working on. Well, our friend, my friend, Randall Battenkoff, just did his 37 A Final Promise, and he was here two weeks ago. I watched that show. Yeah, and it, um, it premiered at the Lemleys, right? And that was really great, and it'll start now next week in New York. Um, but he has the deal with um, Gravitas, and they, did, they released it on Video On Demand, at the same time, right? He did that movie. You should go see it while it's here, or if you can. I don't think yeah. you can. Or, or it watch it on tonight. video on demand. Yeah, but uh, 200 grand. Very good. He shot that. And it has all these great celebrities in it, but 200 grand. I mean, you know, I kind of lived through that. He's the guy. Randall's the one that owns Top Secret. You know Top Secret, the product with that you put on your hair? Right. Yeah, so, That's you funny. know. <laughs> That's why his hair's so good. The world good is hair. so weird, you know, and I met him through just DR stuff and worked on, on his project with him, but then he became a good friend, and I'm so proud of him because the movie really yeah, turned really out great. well. You went, so, to, you went to see it? Oh, yeah. well, I saw it months and months ago when he was making it, you know. And, right. and, you know so um, I'm just proud of him because I know how hard he worked on it. What's your movie about? And actually, before we get into Paul's movie, it's the time is flying right by, so we just we're need going, to. We're going to go until twelve. Well, we will, but still, we need a word from our sponsor. Oh, that's it's, right. It's, a word uh, from a sponsor. our sponsor. Yes, Scott, 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 here. We're going to play your commercial now. Yeah, for Direct Avenue. For Direct so since Avenue, we're all about direct I recommend response today. using for short form direct response. And so here we go. We got a minute. Direct Avenue is much more than a leading direct response TV media buyer. We specialize in the expert planning, brand building, analysis, and management of short form and branded DRTV ad campaigns. We manage direct response TV ad campaigns for clients throughout the United States and Canada. As a Direct Avenue client, you'll benefit from big agency relationships and resources, but receive boutique agency service with the flexibility and creativity to plan and manage a TV ad campaign that meets the particular needs of your company. For more information, visit directavenue.com. When you contact us, mention you heard about us on the C-Spot radio show and receive a free analysis of your TV ad campaign. Whispering. We decided we're going to whisper for the rest of the show because. <laughs> no. Hey, Paul, t t tell me a little bit about your movie. Okay, so it's a uh, it's a sci-fi thriller, time travel story about a scientist whose immersion in his work costs him dearly, and he gets inspired to uh, to take the leap and do what it takes to prevent tragedy from striking twice. Oh, that sounds wow. unique. It I is. love it. A time travel. It's a love I story. I love time travel movies. Can you imagine. Yeah, I, I was in, inspired a number of years ago. There's a great time travel movie called uh, Primer. You oh, I loved Primer. It's a classic. So original. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Classic. And then there's another one uh, called Time Crimes, which is a Spanish language movie. You should, it's oh, on I never that. saw that. I'll have to check that out. It's unbelievable. Really. Uh, I'm going to write these simple. down, so wow. forgive me while I do but that. But Primer is amazing. Yeah. It's so original. After that you movie. watch Primer, you have to watch Time Crimes. Okay, it's I really got to see great. that. I think it's either on Netflix or Amazon. And uh, it's they have, I think they have the version dubbed into English. So um, are you are you um, writing, producing, directing, so starring? I, so it's uh, been written with a very talented writer, Lev Belzer, who's out of uh, out of Michigan, who's been uh, who's been working with me in the last year on this, and uh, 
um, we developed the story and been uh, working on it. He's been writing it, and then uh, we're going to be uh, producing it, and I'll be directing it, and hopefully December we're looking at doing it. So we're wow. in the final stages of uh, of financing. We're speaking with some, um, you know, foreign sales agents about. Uh, Can I have a cameo? <laughs> of course. I, uh, you don't even have to pay me. Can I have a we'll, cameo? We'll, we'll have a. <laughs> See, that's actually how we're raising the funds. You know. <laughs> Right. <laughs> appear in the movie. Yeah, appear in the movie. Uh, you know, the, our, you're our putting it on Craigslist. <laughs> no, I, we'll do. Uh, we'll do our uh, Indiegogo or Kickstarter for. Uh, what for what kind of budget off. are you hoping to do it for? Um, we're going to do it for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and it's right uh, down there. Yeah, and, and the great thing well, is especially that because you can edit and and all of that. I, I right? have all my own facilities, and the other great thing is that I've got, um, you know, uh, edit systems. I've got. Uh, production facilities i got cameras i've got you know i've got a lot of stuff what are you gonna shoot it on we're gonna shoot on 4k digital good you have so to shoot nice. on 4k because you're gonna go to the big screen exactly and uh yeah we just got our new uh, black magic uh, 4k mm -hmm. camera it's beautiful wow very um, nice and these the pictures from these these cameras are just uh gotta watch for the audio i shot i did some pickup stuff with a black magic because there was nothing else available in minneapolis a few right. months ago and just be aware of the audio there's yeah, a little we'll bit of an audio thing yeah separately yeah. Um, but uh, the other great thing is that I, because I have so many people that I work with who I pay a lot of money to be my cameramen and my sound guys and my effects guys, uh, you know, they're able to give me some favors, and that's why I'm able to do it so inexpensively. Right. And I also uh, have a have a deal with Sony Pictures. We're licensing some some outtakes from some uh, action and stunt scenes. Um, so we've got these big stunts in there, which is uh, kind of wow, big. Wow, yeah. how exciting. It's kind of like the Toby Steamer stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Those were impressive. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. they were impressive. <laughs> I, I don't know if Peter played that. Uh, did was you pay my pl play? I, would I you know, would you like play Paul's? Yeah, Paul's let's play his director reel. Yeah, yeah let's so see my that. My director is. You'll, you'll see that at the beginning there. The uh, the first action sequence at the beginning is from the Toby Steamer. Okay, okay so let's we'll take watch a look that at real that. Quick. And sorry for you just listening that you can't actually see it. Yeah, but they could hear it, yeah. so it'll be fun. Here it is, Paul Greenberg's directing reel. <laughs> Sorry, there. you guys. I'm I'm on a bit of a delay here, so I just saw the the cra the live crab. What'd you do? Throw that in boiling water <laughs> to listen to it scream? <laughs> what was that? That was from uh, the Volcano with uh, with Chef Tony. We went to uh, New Orleans. It was a cooking uh, countertop cooking device. And watch as we take this live crab and make it scream bloody murder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm they, kosher, so I don't I don't have to listen to that. So. They really do scream. So the the funny thing was the reason that came up was because you licensed some stuff from Universal, but and then the first scene, the the action scene in the train, right? That that, that was I well, yeah we shot that as a stunt scene in um, at Universal Studios, and we were trying to look uh, for a way to give you know increased uh, production value to the commercial, make it interesting, and how do you make you know a, a garment steamer interesting? So we did a, a whole big stunt scene and had the. Uh, the uh, the lead actor have to have his dress uh, his jacket uh, uh, pressed after every uh, every stunt after, after every stunt and we shot it at the Universal tram I'm ride. I'm glad you always had budgets to do that. You know, well, Paul. Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we split it between three shows. That was the way we were able to afford to do it. Oh we, really? We did a fitness show. We shot there. We did a. Uh, I remember when when you were shooting somebody else said there was back in the day there was a there was a point where everybody wanted to shoot at Universal Studios. I remember that. Did you, did you remember? Did you ever know Bob Williams? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the one that actually did the original Six to Bio Diet and Slender Secret, actually. But he was like, "Oh, well, let's shoot the Universal Studios." Like, what the hell for? We we shot that I think four times. We did a lot of those, you know, man on the street. Exactly. Uh, the city walk. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So. Um, Oh, uh, this is interesting. Who who got creative with the red Wendy Cooper and the Paul red Paul Greenberg Chiron? That, that's all Tony. Tony, you hear me? I'm in here. You're over there. But we you're saying you oh, like it? <laughs> let's let's keep about. it white. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's keep it but white. But nice try. Yeah, but Next nice week, try. We'll keep it white. <laughs> so, Wendy, I have people in four countries listening to us today. Oh, right. You do? I do. I have uh, friends in uh, in the UK. Hello, friends in the UK. It's now, uh, you know, almost nine o'clock at night. Hello. Wow. We, anybody, uh, anybody special? Uh, anyone special? Everyone yeah, is special Dickie in Paul's and Darren <laughs> and Alexis. All Actually, there. tell Wendy who your father went to school with. Oh, you didn't know this about me? You know where I'm from originally? Maybe she knows. I don't know. Do you know where I'm from li originally? Uh, Liverpool. And? Who's famous from Liverpool? 
Oh, Paul Lennon. <laughs> right, Paul Lennon. <laughs> Do Don't let him hear you say John, that. John Lennon. <laughs> wow, you're so up on the popular culture. <laughs> um, My dad went to school with John uh, Lennon, uh, uh, Paul and John. Paul and John. Yeah, went Qu- to Quarry Bank High. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't know that about you. So that's uh, yeah. I also have my friend Daniel in Hong Kong. Hello, Daniel in Hong Kong. Uh, Hi, Daniel. It it is four o'clock in the morning, so I'm. And he is watching. uh, They can always watch on YouTube tomorrow when I load it up to YouTube, but it's not the same thing as watching live. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. For sure, watching it live. For sure, and then also hopefully some people in Brazil. My uh, my uh, my wife's family in Brazil, and then also in uh, of course people in the U.S. and maybe somebody in Israel. Oh, if they're, wow. I mean, how are they doing over there? It, this is okay. streaming live into Gaza right now. It is streaming. I'm we sure are live are into Gaza. Yeah, we are. And, and if you look, there's a tunnel coming up. <laughs> 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 and that's how Paul got here. <laughs> I came in through the tunnel. <laughs> came in through the tunnel. So so what else besides your, um, when are you going to finish up John's show? And you're, are you going to Las Vegas? I'm going to Las Vegas uh, for the annual uh, ERA trip. conference. Yeah, the trip to Mecca. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's actually not the trip to Mecca it's the trip out of Mecca <laughs> <laughs> that, that is important. so anyway. uh, yeah we'll be doing that hopefully the show will be done uh, uh, around that time and uh, do you have anything planned for the convention Paul uh, nothing special just uh, just meeting um, you know uh, clients and uh, yeah it's the same old shit the same old uh, same old you know same I old wasn't gonna go but I gotta actually we're gonna interview Dave Martin from uh, next week Two weeks. Two In weeks. two weeks. We're going to interview him for a little bit on the show for him to talk about what it's like to uh, actually do the marketing for a an association. And in return, it's lovely because I'll have a press pass. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then I'll be able to Could probably... Yes, right. inner, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is my assistant. You Didn't could hold you her guys notepads know? and everything, right? <laughs> um, uh, all part of your entourage. Yeah, so that'll that'll be kind of nice because I don't, you know, I'll try to find a few people to maybe interview. Or yeah, and do I mean, whatever. you've got a show, you know, and you'll you're. We there. don't need to. Don't do that, Peter. I'm going to smack you in. What's that? That. Uh, Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we finagle things in this business, <laughs> and I and it's not that I finagled. I think that I have. We have a great viewership here and a great listenership. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So and um, it's great that you know ERA is giving me the press pass in order to to go because actually the event is an amazing event. I'll give it some kudos. We go every year. I've been going for the past almost twenty years. I'm sure Paul, you've been going for the fifteen, fourteen that you've been in this 14, business. Yeah. And um, um, but you know, it's an association, and it is a—it's a little bit of an investment for us when we're not working for a big company that actually can afford, you know, fifteen hundred dollar conference fees right. plus hotel. You yeah. know, I'm my company is a small company; it's expensive. Right, and it's also—it seems that they these events are being getting uh, getting a little smaller each year, and uh, less of the people in that that I find less of the people that uh, I'm used to meeting. Um, it's well, what it what I, what it is is I don't think that it's getting smaller. I think that it's finally just being expecta- more diverse. Our expectations are getting bigger. Our expectations <laughs> are bigger, and the people. It's funny because there's like twelve. I always I always used to say it's like there's like twelve of us actually in this business that you know, and everybody else is Phil, right? <laughs> and now there's six, <laughs> <laughs> but. There's the digital world has emerged right. and there's a lot of different vendors and things like this. And that's kind of that's very refreshing because there's so many with you having your own product and now having to run that campaign right. from the bottom up. You know, you have to do so many. Um, it's omni channel. Right. And it's just really important. Uh, I'll send you the thing I just got about this white paper about Amazon today. And, you know, 50 percent of sales, if you don't have your product on Amazon when you're on television, you're out of your freaking mind. Because I knew I I proved this with Squatty Potty and 50 percent of your sales will go to people who buy from television, driven from television, will buy it on Amazon and they will not go pay less money for it on your site. They'll go to Amazon and pay more money for it. Because they trust Amazon, they can get it with Amazon Prime. You can only you have to do fulfillment by Amazon in order to qualify for Prime, and but that's where people go, and that's where people are going and shopping. Right. And so you'll learn that you're throwing money away if you don't have your product actually on Amazon. So right. just you know that's just a little hint. Because Good advice. Fifty percent of the people that came off of the Squatty Potty commercial bought on Amazon. That's incredible. 
Yeah. Yeah. So my product is now on Amazon prior to even, we haven't even tested our commercial yet. Right. <laughs> you know, September 7th, week of September 7th, we're testing it. But, you know, we just got the mold here three and weeks and ago. And how, how easy was it to set up that account with them? It's, oh, it's super easy. You know, it's a little, and, and I'm having sure them you, fulfill it? Um, I'm in the process of, you can fulfill it yourself because I have motivational fulfillment for my fulfillment company. I can fulfill it myself. So they just send the orders to you. Um, and then they, that's hooked up to, um, uh, to motivational and then motivational ships it out. Right. But meanwhile, I'm setting, I've set up FBA fulfillment by Amazon because I want to be able to be prime. Sure. And, um, it's a little complicated, all of the things you need to do and the stuff, but, you know, it's it's actually, I have a one SKU, so it's pretty easy. Um, and then the HomeDepot.com, I've gotten that up, approved to be on the HomeDepot.com because I feel That's as though right. I need to be in the place that has 600 freaking toilets, right? <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> and, move. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of work. And then I have a digital company working with me, Walla Media, so you have to have your digital presence and how to get out there and work your it's very interesting there's one very important thing that i say to anybody um, and it's touching on this anybody who does a test this day and age and doesn't have a website live and doesn't have the product available for the test and doesn't have some kind of social media already well, exactly in you, you're just throwing your money away and I, I see it all the time people say well i did a test and we got such low uh, call volume uh, call volume and they say well did, was your website live well we had a placeholder there but we know there's going to be 20 percent of the oh my god the sales people will be, are still doing people that people still say that they say well 20 percent or 30 percent 80 percent it's all, it's close to 80 percent even the ones that do call most of them still check on the website before they make the call well and it depends on the product category right it really does but i, I don't do a phone number I only do drive to web right. because my theory is it depends on the product, but I have a one-off. I have a toilet stool, so why would I have a call center? Right. You know, I'm not going to pay for that call center. Number one, there's a setup fee. Number two, I'm paying cost per call. Uh, You're not upselling time laxatives. On the call. No, I'm not upselling <laughs> laxatives. <laughs> but here's here's something that that happened that most people really need to be aware of, and you need to also. I'm I'm working with a company. I'm not going to name them because this was really crazy. What just happened this past week? My website literally has been live for six months. Although I haven't had my product, my website's been live. Why? Because you want you want to have a presence, right? And you also, there's, Google is always changing, and now there's the Google quality scores and these things. So, like, even if you did your SEM, your search engine marketing, they now call it as opposed to management, and you have your AdWords and you're bidding on your AdWords, unless you have a good quality score with Google, those AdWords aren't going to do you any good. Your ads are not going to be seen. Okay, so Google feeds the ad on the Google search pages depending on your quality score. So my SCM person, Tiffany, she comes to me last week and she says, our quality score is at two, you know, and, you know, because we're ramping up to do a lot of SE SEM, investing money in it. And she says, it's only two, so we're never going to be seen, and it's gonna, we're throwing our money away. And I said, why? She goes, let me do some research. She comes back to me and she says that the company – that is on their platform, their e-com platform, right? We designed the website. We handed it over to them. They're supposed to hard code it, right? They put it up and they didn't hard code it with HTML hard coding. So it wasn't being found, right? Wow. And boy, did I go through the That's frickin' crazy. roof, mm. all right? So yesterday, I get a phone call. One week later, I get a phone call. I had the company hard code it, obviously. And we're, our quality score is six. And our quality score being six on Google is a very high quality score. Oh, yeah. Right. So, well, it's, you know, 10 is the highest. So, you know, but I could have been throwing my point to the company was, number one, when you got the site from us and the PSD files, did it, why mean? didn't you tell us? if you thought that it was coded improperly, because it was only soft coded basically from Photoshop, right? right? You're supposed to hard code it. But, and, and you get a, tran a, a dollar per transaction. Doesn't it behoove you, assholes, to tell me that it isn't coded properly? Right? Why are you waiting and going, well, we thought you were gonna do it. You're gonna now, uh, uh, my point, watch out for things like this. Because I couldn't really understand why am I not getting any traction? You know, Squatty Potty's on Howard Stern. You know, there's there's people online talking about that kind of thing. Incremental sales really should be coming in from their media, right? And and it's because 
it wasn't coded properly. It's a, it's a lesson to everybody that you can't let anybody uh, just, you know, trust that something. they're doing you, the, you're, the you're, right you're, thing. You you have to always, you know, keep an eye on things. Boy, look deeply. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So you know what? Our time is kind of up, Paul. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> it is definitely. I didn't want to say anything, but yes, it is. I haven't had so much fun uh, hearing myself speak since uh, since last time I was on the show. Well, you know what's really fun is that we can hear ourselves speak now and we can see ourselves speak, which well, is even more fun. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm nervous about. <laughs> that you're nervous about? No, you look great. So I've given Paul two Easy Go Pros. Okay. And, and you're going to take them home. I have to do a testament. I'll give them to my kids. <laughs> no, you know, most people really, really like them, even if you think you don't need it, because it's just, it's the idea that it puts you in the anatomy correct position and so it is more comfortable right right and they do complement the decor of your bathroom <laughs> they do when you put it in when you bring it home and you give it to your wife and the kids are gonna love it you, you have little ones that still have dangling feet uh, right exactly they're gonna like it. they're gonna like that they're gonna yeah, like my it. youngest is three he will, uh, he will he's gonna love it. it they're all gonna really like it and okay. and then you have to tell me and even do little videos for me okay <laughs> look at it, my house but um, happy holidays. If I, I, I'll see you in September. But you know, I'm just gonna wish you happy Thank holidays. Thank you so now. much. Thank you. It's, you know, and uh, Peter also happened. because Peter is a is a is a c c c c c capitalist. <laughs> right. Yes. So yeah, the holidays are coming right up. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But Paul, it was very nice to meet you in person. Thank at you. Long very last. nice. It was nice. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's a much more uh, convenient location than, uh, than last time. It's kind of cool. It's too bad that the parking was so sucky today because right. they've got the street closed off. But um, yeah, it's and it's fun to be on the lot. The perils of uh, being in Hollywood. The perils of yeah. being <laughs> in Hollywood. I know. Not a big but fancy studio. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank and you we will me. invite you back next week so that you can make four. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, we'll be back next week live with we Ashley will. Krause. We'll be back with Ashley, and she'll be making her second appearance. And she's asked me to come back because she's got. She says she's setting the world on fire. She's a singer songwriter, and she is setting the world on fire. She goes, I gotta come back, and I go, Okay, Ash. <laughs> so she'll be back, and then Johnny V, who I just did two commercials for, um, great. They're actually these products are really rocking products. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's amazing. Um, he'll be here on the twenty eighth. Yep. Yeah, and so that'll be a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for watching. Paul, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and uh, uh, bye Tokyo, goodbye London, and yes. Peter, uh, we'll see you next week. All right, sounds okay. good. Our, our, our outro music was composed by Tom Orsi. Tom Orsi. <laughs>